Hi, I'm Steph. I'm from the YouTube channel I Drive a Classic. I've been doing the channel now for about two and a half years and I do all sorts on it. So I do car reviews and I try and build a little bit of historical context in. So why is that like that? Where did that engine come from? How did that happen? And I try and take out a good mix of stuff because I love learning about new things and sharing it with people as well. So I've driven everything from Mr Bean's actual Mini from the TV series, which was certainly a bit of a highlight for me on the channel. I've driven really rare stuff, green goddesses, Saint Pemi, which had come from abroad, right through to your bread and butter classics that you'd expect. MGBs, Morris Miners, Beatles. I try and mix it up a bit and show people different stuff. And recently I've become really interested in a lot of pre-war and vintage stuff because I think that it's an area that people don't talk enough about and that we need to start bringing in a bit of awareness because not to be too crude and put too fine a point on it, but the age group that are really interested in that sort of stuff by a majority are a lot older. So where will we be in 30 years if we don't try and build a bit of celebration and appreciation for those cars? When I go out and pick a car, I always tend to go for, well, I never ever have a very decent budget. I always play with stupid money, as in I never really go above that £2,000 threshold. It used to be £1,000, but nowadays you can't get anything for £1,000, so it's always this £2,000 threshold that I tend to play up to. When I look for something, a lot of people say, oh, I really like the way it looks, or this, or this, or that. For me nowadays, I look at everything from what's my parts availability like, because for the Metro, it's been quite a miserable experience. I've not been able to get everything as freely as I would have liked to, because I've been very sport with the Morris Minor. You can get everything, well, pretty much everything and anything you need. And it's not just the parts that I think about either. I also look at things like the owners clubs, because when you're stuck and you need to ask for advice, I don't like going straight to a Hayden Spaniel. I like to go and speak to people because it's through experience and trial and error that people can give you the information that you actually need. Anyone can pick up a book and say, oh, this is how you do it. But it's speaking to people, sometimes people with decades of experience that really help make the job a lot easier than it might be if you just follow a book. So it's that really. So it's price always needs to be dirt cheap. Can I get the parts for it? Yes or no and then the owner's clubs as well. And usually I've, if I've bought something, I've driven an example before I've bought one. So I tend to know if I'm gonna like it or not. I don't just go at it blind, not anymore, because that's how disasters happen. Driving a classic car for me is proper driving. You get to experience the car, you really understand the car a lot more. If something goes wrong on a modern car, I lift that bonnet and you just, greeted by these plastic covers, you've got no idea what's going on. Something goes wrong on a, on a classic car, you can hear a noise. I mean, there is always a noise, that is my disclaimer. There is always a noise or something knocking or rattling and it's not great. But you hear something new amongst the medley of noises and you think, oh, it's probably that or it's that or it could be this. And I don't know, I feel I know this car better and all the cars I've got really better than I would ever know a modern car. I wouldn't be able to fix one. I only ever passed my driving test to drive a classic car. I didn't want to drive anything modern. So I couldn't tell you, oh, when I drive my modern car, it's like this. When I drive my classic cars, it's like this. Because for me, the modern car, jokingly, is the Morris Marina. Because it's from 1971. I wouldn't, I couldn't imagine being shoehorned into something. In terms of the future of classics, I think thinking about things like hydrogen power and electric, I'm seeing a lot of people be quite negative about it, but I'd rather carry on enjoying my car as much as I can. If they said to me, right, tomorrow, all petrol and diesel is banned, you cannot use it. All these people that sit at home and moan and say, oh, well, that's it, I'd give up. That is such a defeatist attitude. Why would you give up? What, to go and sit in something that you also hate, that's also running on hydrogen electric? Don't be so defeatist. There's a really great company down in London and I've been really interested in what they've been doing and I've been following it for a number of years. So I think one of their first ones was a Morris Minor and they turned it into an electric car. And if you think about the designer of the Morris Minor, Alakis Agonis, he 
would have, I think, thought it was a really clever move because he was a man who was very forward thinking. You know, he was involved with the Mini and thinking about things like the petrol crisis. So would Alec Isagonis say, sit at home and moan on your laptop on Facebook groups about having to convert your car over and move with the times? Or would he say, give it a go, see how it goes. There's nothing to say that you can't keep the engine and the petrol tank and all the rest of it and pop it to one side to see if you can use it later on. I would rather enjoy my classics in a compromised way than not at all. And that's kind of my thoughts on it really, which I know some people will be like, that's sacrilege. They should stay as they are. But if you think about it, we've moved with the times. People have swapped over from dynamos to alternators, points onto electronic ignition. Throughout time, there must have been people that said, oh, you know, well, there are still people. They say, oh, I won't run my car on anything but points. If you want to keep enjoying your car, there will always be a few compromises and things that you should consider to carry on enjoying the car. I'd rather enjoy it a little bit than not at all. So if anybody has sat through this mad ramble, and I hope at least there's one person who's made it to the end of the video, if you haven't checked it out already, I've got my own YouTube channel. It's called I Drive a Classic. It's all one word. And you can go and watch all my videos and see what my adventures and car reviews are all about.